All right, financial statements in Power BI, they can be a little tricky, but I still think it's the right tool for the job. Often when people start, I see them going back to their trusty Microsoft Excel due to demands on formatting or kind of limitations on customization that's currently in Microsoft Power BI. Uh, we're gonna walk through one way that you can make an income statement that's repeatable, useful, uh, accurate and as automated as possible. So let's jump in. So starting point here, we need a sort of a general ledger type view. Often this can come out of a company's QuickBooks or if they run SAP or generally a general ledger is just a transactions table that has a date, has an amount, has a account, and then we need to put some framework around it. So parent and child. The child is what rolls up to the parent. So these three types of sales, we're running a beer, hot dog, and popcorn company, rolls up to sales. We have these normal expenses going up to operating expenses. And then finally, these are kind of our summary level view in our little mini income statement. Um, we wanna show net income, gross profit, and those are going to be calculated and I'll show you how to do that in Power BI. So we've all done this, I'm pretty sure. Import data from Excel. Obviously, if your general ledger lives somewhere else, like a real database, that's a better place to pull it. But uh, for this tutorial, we're just going to pull it from the Excel we just looked at. I want both of these tables. As you can see, there's no difference to what we just looked at. So now that we've got the data in here, let's have a look and make sure everything came through properly. Yep, date format on date and our income statement structures there. Let's do step one, relate account to child. So we're making a very mini data model where income statement is a dimension table and general ledger is our fact table. This is how it looks. First interesting DAX function we're going to use here is called path. And what path does is it essentially creates a hierarchy. If you feed the formula, a parent and child, uh, two column table, I typed it wrong there. Okay. So child and then parent. This is how it looks. Let's drag it into the visual. Right, so it's pretty much, it's putting like a bar between each one of your levels that we defined in the structure of the income statement. So sales, below that is beer sales, hot dog sales, all that good stuff. Let's make another column using another related DAX function. This function is called path item. And as you might expect, it pulls an item from the path. So give it the path column and just put level one. And yep, you guessed correctly probably. It just gives you that first level there. So I guess the furthest left of the path length. Level two, same exact syntax give it the path column, put the number two. And that gives us level two. So what we're doing here is we're kind of making a hierarchy just using DAX. So I made level three using the same way. And you can see that the levels sometimes end, they may not have a level two, they may not have a level three. And I'll show you how we account for that later. So, Let's start with a matrix visual here, um, level two, level three, let's bring in our values. And you can see it's, it's a bit out of order, but the hierarchy is working. Cogs opens up into the three cost of goods sold accounts there. We need to make a measure because what we're missing here is our gross profit and our net income lines that we had put in our income statement structure. You can see it to the left there uh, in the normal table. So 
we are going to use a DAX measure to account for that. And we only have to do all this work up front once and um, you just keep feeding it, you know, a live feed of your company's general ledger and it will account for it. So let's make a variable here for sales. We need to do the all because we need to eliminate filter context and then reestablish filter context. Um, so it's just doing a sum of amount for everything that has level two of sales. Uh, the next variable we'll define here is our cost of goods sold. And we need sales and cost of goods sold because sales minus cost of goods sold is gross profit, right? Then we will do G and A. For some reason, I can't do the ampersand when I'm establishing a variable. And then, oh, I also can't do a space either. So let's just underscore it. Uh, so variable operating expense. And those are all the same. They're doing the same all to eliminate filter context because we're basically just telling this measure to put a number on this line. So let's use the DAX switch function where we will switch level two, the selected value of level two. And for if that's equal to gross profit, let's tell it to return sales minus cost of goods sold. If it's net income, you know, further down the income statement, we want sales minus cost of goods sold minus our GNA expenses, which is our general and administrative expenses minus operating expenses for everything else as we already saw in the matrix is pulling through correctly. So just give us the sum of the amount, uh, just give us the same numbers we were pulling through. Okay. Drag that into the visual. And as you can see, just the straight amount leaves blank on gross profit and net income. As you'd expect, we go back to the Excel, you know, there is no account from your general ledger transactions table that maps into net income or gross profit. These are truly just calculated, parts of our income statement. But that's not a problem because we did the measure we just did. And of course, everything's still out of order, but the numbers are calculated correctly. Now let's finally address the issues with uh, the order of our matrix. And of course, no, let's not do that. Let's do enter table, not a DAX created table. Let's call it sort, sort table. And this is going to be a simple two column table. Column one is level two. Column two is our ordered number and that just needs to be a normal integer. So level two, we will write all of our unique level twos here. One row per G and A and finally net income. And this is the order we want, right? We want sales on top, revenue on top of our, our income statement and net income on the bottom. So load that table up and that's all in memory. That's not, you know, connected to anything. We just defined what it was. And good, that DAX table went away. Let's relate level two over to level two on our income statement structure table. And there may be a better way to do this, but this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a calculated column using the related DAX function because we just established that relationship to the sort order table. So related, and I'm going to bring in that simple integer column order. So sales is one cost to get sold is two. Everything's looking pretty good. Now, in order to set the sort order, oh, it looks like that, that didn't take. Let's go back and fix that. So we want to sort level two, right? So hit here, sort by sort order. And let's see if that took, and it did. Okay. So sales, cost of goods sold, gross profit, all the way down to net income. Okay. Now let's do a little formatting here. The subtotals 
looked off. We had one on the bottom. We don't need that because we've got the net income total line, right? So let's do per row level and just level two. So that'll leave the subtotals where we want them and not add one at the bottom. Column subtotals, you know, we did monthly data in our general ledger table. Don't need quarter. So let's drill down to the monthly view. And then we've got two totals. We don't like that. So same concept, let's do the per column level and leave the total on year. And that looks a little better. Okay, one issue we have here is look at this blank line when I open gross profit and open net income. That's just super annoying to me. It's probably not annoying to other people, but it's annoying to me. So there is a workaround here. We can use, and I just pasted in the DAX here, uh, but I'll walk through it. But let's establish a variable called relevant level, and that'll be the selected value of level three, because we want to end that drill down for anything that has a blank on level three. So the return statement is saying, if level three is in scope, meaning somebody has attempted to click down to that third level from level two, and that value is blank, like it is here under gross profit and under net income, then give me a blank and blank will disallow that drill down hitting that plus else we just want the normal number because it's functioning correctly so let's put comma formatting here for thousands drag it in all right now let's just test it out looks like the cost of goods sold is open and closing as it should gross profit doesn't go down to blank just like we wanted. Perfect. So this is an income statement one way. If you like it, like, subscribe. Thank you.